Yeah, herders is something that OSRL has been looking at for a number of years now. Um, and we've teamed up with quite a few people um, to look at this. So uh, we're basically always looking to explore new tools in our response toolbox. And that's one of, uh, one of my uh, uh, job roles is to, to look over the horizon, to look what's coming. So I said before, I'm looking at autonomous systems. And we started looking at, at looking at herders and how those um, might, uh, might help us in our own toolbox going forwards. So what are the kind of things that we've done? Well, first of all, a um, small group of us at OSRL have come together and we've started looking at how we can, you know, what would be the feasibility and the, the issues around operationalizing herders within our response capability. So we've been looking at that in terms of where, where we get stockpiles, you know, how we uh, train our responders, et cetera, et cetera. And that led to uh, uh, setting up this herder working group, which is, which is led by myself, but it also includes a lot of other people from OSRL, but uh, also people like Tim Nedwed from uh, ExxonMobil. We've got the uh, supplier now of the herder on, on this working group. We've got researchers on the working group, um, Abby's here today and, and others. And we've now got the Canadian uh, regulator in this working group. So it's very much an informal um, uh, get together, all on teams uh, over, you know, once or twice um, every few months. And we're just talking about how we're getting on with our respective organizations to do uh, with herders. And that is really all we're interested in, is what will it take to operationalize herders and what are the issues for, for us as a response uh, company. Um, we as OSRL attended Poker Flats trial, that trial that you've just seen on the, on the video there. So we had a, a couple of our responders go there and, and look at that and get some knowledge on that and bring that back to us. We've also looked at toxicity screening um, for thick slick 6535. I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. And looking at the regulatory uh, process to get that approved in, in, the, in the UK. And that would just be another tool in the toolbox um, that could be available um, using the, the NEVA-based decision process. And we've also started to do uh, quite a bit of stakeholder engagement here in the UK. So I presented to um, Offshore Energy, UK um, a few weeks ago, and um, yeah, um, I had a lot of interest from some of the uh, Aberdeen-based uh, operators on the use of hurdles. So one of the things that I was tasked to do um, was we need to have these uh, new herders uh, <coughs> tested against specific um, uh, country-specific regulations. So you've heard that they're approved in the US, and they're also approved in uh, Kazakhstan. And Pete Taylor, who's here in the room, was uh, instrumental in, in some of that testing process. So um, if you want to have a word with Pete about um, how that went to in Kazakhstan and, and catch up with him. But um, I, I took it upon myself um, to uh, see if we could get Thick Slick 6535 onto the UK approved list. And um, I had to wait um, because there was these new uh, toxicity testing protocols coming out of CFAS, and uh, that was uh, written by uh, CFAS, um, and Mark Kirby is here in the room as well, who was instrumental in, in putting together these new, uh, these new procedures. So um, they essentially uh, get away from uh, the old procedures that you may remember of the, the limpet test and the, uh, the, 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 the shrimp test. It's basically a, a pass-fail now using a copia pod and a chain diatom called skeleton emu. It's a simple um, uh, toxicity test for the threshold of 10 ppm. Um, and that's the new procedure that, that's come in. Um, if you need any more details on that, then I'm sure uh, Mark will help with any questions if I can answer them. So what did I do? Well, I uh, contracted a laboratory down in Brixham in Devon, which is here in the UK, called Cymaris. It's a uh, commercial laboratory. Um, I commissioned them to put Thick Slick 6535 through this new uh, toxicity protocol that, that uh, CFAS uh, had issued. And uh, it, it passed all those tests, which is, which is fantastic news. Um, we presented a paper at CTAC um, Europe on that, but that, that was led by Simaris. And that report was then used um, in our application 
um, to the Marine <coughs> Management Organization. And Mike <coughs> is in the room here from MMO. So if you want to talk to, to Mike about uh, anything to do with the MMO, um, he'll, he'll no doubt be uh, able to assist you. So that report that came out of the Cymaris uh, contracted work was put through the MMO approval process. So you essentially fill in this uh, form, uh, you attach the uh, reports from, from the laboratory, in this case it was Cymaris. Um, there is a fee uh, which OSRL pays for, usually that's the, uh, in, in the case of dispersants, the manufacturer that pays that, but we, we as OSRL paid, paid for that. Um, that goes into the, uh, into the process and I believe that then goes through and gets uh, reviewed by CFAS and others. And then, um, yeah, you get notified uh, whether it's been approved or not, and, and it has been approved, um, which now means it's on the UK approved Orsville treatment products. It's on the list there. But if you look at the uh, Marine Pollution Contingency Plan for the, for the UK, then in situ burning is not, not a preferred or, or, uh, option there. But we've got now um, herders on the list there because the, the thought process is, if you look at some of the NEVA type uh, good, good practice guidelines, you think about the technique is, is it effective? Is it feasible? Does it provide a NEVA? And then you look at the regulations. So, you know, if there was an incident here in the UK and there was a NEVA case for using herders, then at least this is in, in place. And OSRL has no sort of specific driver to use herders on every single spill in the UK going forwards, but it's just there. It's another tool in the toolbox that the authorities can then look at uh, with the um, responsible party. And it may be that there's a NEBA there for, for, their, for their use. So um, that's what I've been doing with, with herders, specifically at OSRL from the TOX point of view. Um, but we've also been looking at operationalizing these. So, the next steps for, for OSRL as a, in, in, the, in the subject of herders are we want to widen the awareness of, of herders. And, you know, today is an example of that, having this, um, this, this, this session here. We've got a paper at IOSC um, being accepted. Uh, OSRL is looking at how we're going to operationalize herders. Um, and we're going to continue with this herder working group that we've got. We're going to have a herder research, research bank um, that... Uh, Paul Schuler at the back there has uh, done the same for dispersants. We're going to have the same for herders. So if there's any research groups that want to reach out and look at herders, then they'll be able to access some, some herders through a, through a research bank. And, for example, the Canadian government, ECCC, are going to, uh, uh, have reached out to us already to, to do some efficacy testing on, on uh, fixed like 6535. Um, we're also looking at the impact of subpart J that you heard about yesterday and, and where um, that might impact on herders. And we may explore other countries in terms of approvals for, for France and Australia, for example. Um, maybe a spill of opportunity might come along and we can use them. And we are thinking about maybe an oil and water exercise in a couple of years' time. And that is me, hopefully, within my time. Okay.